right? Now, we're in the middle of a collection of sermons through the droughts of Scripture. And we started this journey talking about Ruth and Boaz and the journey through that drought that took place that led to a redemptive story and and the story of how you've been redeemed and you're taken back to your original state of being and how God designed you to be from the beginning. That's what happens in salvation. And we learned that through that drought. And then we did Josiah. Remember Josiah talked about sometimes we need to clean the house. And I held a broom and I had a bunch of gear up here to clean the house. And and I sprayed all that stuff and it got all to me, right? And we had to clean the house. What happens in the drought? Sometimes we need to let a repentant heart be displayed so that God can heal us. But we got to be honest about the sin within us. Which, by the way, here, if you're brand new visiting and you're saying, well, 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 we know we all have sin, but you're like, man, you don't know how much sin I got. I just want you to know whether you're watching online or you're in the room, there is not one perfect person in this room. Amen? And if you think, if you think well, well, who's not perfect? Look to your right and then look to your left. And then look behind you and in front of you. They're not perfect, all right? And I'm in front of all of you, all right? And so I'm not, I'm not perfect either. And that's, who, that, that's, that's the place we are. We all need to have a repentant heart at times. We need to clean the house. And then we talk about recognizing the provision of God during the drought. We did 1 Kings 17 when God put on Elijah that he needed to call for a drought. And then as I was preaching that, if you'll remember, I told you this last week if you were here, as I was preaching that, uh, the Lord really put it on my heart, hey, you need to pause in, in what you're about to preach in the future sermons to this drought, and what you need to talk about is spend a little more time with Elijah. So last week, I brought back 1 Kings 18, but I didn't make it all the way through. Amen? I know that's a surprise to all of you. And I think it's important we go all the way through. I think it's important we don't rush our time through God's Word. We got a long time together. Amen? And as long as we're on this planet, as long as we're a part of this church, we got a long time together. So at times we need to slow down going through God's Word and let it sink in. Sometimes we go too fast. We don't let it sink in. We need to let it sink in. But last week, I talked about let faith lead. Remember I had the post hole diggers up here, our character developers, whatever you want to call them. But the post hole diggers, I had them. Sometimes we throw down the post hole diggers, and we need to pick them up, and we need to let faith lead. And we need to keep digging no matter how much rock we hit. Well, this week, if I gave you one word for the sermon, it would just be the word faithfulness. Just, just faithfulness. Just live faithful faithfulness. And we're going to get on the backside of the story of 1 Kings 18. But I'd like to read the whole passage to you today before I just preach through it. I'd like to read it all to you in verses 41 through 46. Now, I'm going to start in 41 for you who are already saying, well, you know you ended with 41 last week. Yes, I know that. All right? But I want to go back there. I want to remind us. It says, in Elijah, verse 41, said to Ahab, remember, Ahab is a king. He's married to Jezebel, the queen. All right? Elijah said to Ahab. Now, remember, this is post when fire fell from heaven. This is post that Mount Carmel experience when Elijah had killed all the prophets of Baal, the people with him. So he said to Ahab, go and eat and drink, for there is sound of a heavy rain. I don't see a cloud yet. I don't know if rain's coming, but there is a sound of heavy rain. So you need to go and get some nourishment. Go eat and drink, because we're about to have to move. So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah, notice Elijah, who had been quarantined for three and a half years, who had been a refugee for three and a half years, who had not had much nourishment for three and a half years, he didn't go to the party. What did he do? But Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down, and he does a yoga move, bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. So you got Elijah in this story, bent down, right, puts his faith face between his knees. I can't get that far. And probably held his palms up and begins to pray and stays like that through the rest of this story. His head's between his knees. Imagine this moment that's taking place. He says to his servant, go and look forward. Go and look toward the sea. Now, if you're, if, when you go with me to Israel, which by the way, our Israel, all of our Israel team already knows this, but our Israel trip that was going to go this year, we had to move it uh, due to some certain things that happened this year. I don't know if y'all heard about them, but it's still called COVID-19, came out and 
And so we had to, I know nothing else been moved this year, but, you know, we do have to move the Israel trip. And so we had to move the Israel trip, which is pretty disappointing, but we're super excited. We get to go next year, and we'll be a part of the, the Christmas tree lighting in Bethlehem and everything. Here's the good news in that, by the way. We're going to open back up sign-ups. And so we have up to, uh, we've already got 40-something going. We're, we're going to add another 20, 30 people to that trip. And so if you were like, man, I, I really want to go with you to Israel, we'll go. You can go to israel.trinitychurchok.com to sign up. But uh, you can go with us. But one thing you'll do when you get in Israel is we'll stand on top of Mount Carmel. And when you stand on top of Mount Carmel, if it's a clear day, you can see all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. It's fascinating. I mean, you can see it if it's a clear day. It's like standing in the panhandle of Oklahoma. You can see for decades, right? I mean, you can see so far. And so he said, go and look toward the sea. So you say, why did he look toward the sea? Because it was probably a clear day and he could see the sea where the storm would be coming from. Fascinating. Pay attention to scripture there. He told his servant and he went up and he looked. There's nothing there, he said. Seven times with his head between his knees, bent down, he said, go back. The seventh time the servant reported a cloud as small as a man's hand. Don't ever underestimate something small. Amen. Cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black and clouds, the wind rose, a heavy rain started falling, and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. The power of the Lord came to on Elijah, and his 40 time went up significantly. He tucked his cloak into his belt, and he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel, which was about 17 miles. Now, let's unpack this for a moment, because when I was reading this last week, and I got into 1 Kings 18, And I was looking at 1 Kings 18, and I I remember standing in this service last week as I was reading that, and I was preaching 1 Kings 18. Uh, uh, The Spirit within me was speaking to me. Uh, I I felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. I wasn't saying what I felt like God was doing in me, but but I began to process it this week. And when I made this statement, I read the passage, and Elijah said to Ahab, Go eat and drink, for there is a sound of heavy rain. I just felt like as we were doing starting the Together We Journey and everything, um, I just felt like the Lord was saying there's rain coming. 2020 has been a drought. Can we just be real about it? Can we just be gut level honest? I guarantee you every one of you have had a moment during 2020 when you go, really, God? Are you going to do this, God? Where are you going to be, God? Or maybe a depressed moment, maybe a frustrated moment. Anybody been angry? If you've got a Facebook page, you have, right? The second you open, that's why you need to get off Facebook. Come on, somebody, right? Like you just turn it on, you're like, I, I'm so mad. And people are just making junk up, and you get mad at it, right? And, and it, it happens to the best of us, and we, and we get frustrated and discouraged and depressed, and all these feelings are taking place in 2020, and we're almost questioning, God, what's on the other side of this? What's it going to be like? What things going to happen in America? And we're questioning everything, and, and, and I, I just felt in my spirit as I process all that, even what goes on in our church and how good God's been to our church, um, there's rain coming. Build the Together We Center. There's rain coming. Challenge your people to share the gospel. There's rain coming. Challenge your people to rise in their faith. There's rain coming. Challenge marriages to be healed because there's rain coming. Stop giving up in the middle of a valley when you hit a bunch of rocks because there's rain coming. Too many people in the world today throw down the post hole diggers when we need to pick them up and we need to keep digging because there's rain coming. And I believe this in our community. I believe it for all around the world, everybody watching online. I believe it in your home. I believe it in all of our marriages. I believe it in raising children. I believe it in the wayward kids. I believe it in the rebellious life that's being lived out there. I believe it in the marriages that are fall so far apart that it would take a miracle to draw them together. I believe rain's coming and we don't need to give up. Rain's coming. And I'm, I'm just telling you, 
that God didn't give us that word by accident. That word was not planned. I, I didn't plan on preaching it when I started writing this series. God just reminded me of that when I was preaching last week. There's, there's rain coming, so get ready. There's rain coming, so prepare. Don't forget about me. I've provided many times. There's rain coming. So it says in verse 42, so Ahab went off to eat and drink. He went and lived like there's rain coming. Do you live like there's rain coming? Are you in the middle of your drought just living in frustration and depression? And you just kind of caved. Do you, live, do you believe it? Do you live like there's rain coming? Ahab went off and did exactly what Elijah said. But Elijah, the man of God, what did he do? Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel. Uh, Ahab went and did what Elijah told him to do. It, it, you could probably put together a good strong debate that Ahab's faith was more in Elijah than it was in Almighty God. Because if his faith was in Almighty God, I bet he would have followed Elijah. But sometimes we put our faith in a person instead of in a God. Amen? And when, I, when you put your faith in a person, I promise you they will always let you down at some point. Always. Sometimes people will look at their pastor and they will hold their pastor on a certain pedestal until their pastor does a sinful moment. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Like cut you off in traffic. And then when your pastor cuts you off in traffic, you're like, is that the pastor? And you start judging me. You, you need to repent. You've got a sinful heart. So do I. But we're all living in it together, amen? No perfect people allowed here at Trinity. Praise God for it. But we have those moments, right? But you put your faith in a person to let you down. But I want to tell you, My God's never let me down. I've gone through some valleys. I've gone through some challenges. I've gone through some days where I'm like, God, are you going to make it rain ever? Like, is it ever going to rain? And some of those have been prolonged where I've really questioned if it would ever rain again. But my God's always come through. Place your faith in Almighty God. That's what Elijah did. But Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground, This is a great yoga move, right? Put his face between his knees. He goes before Almighty God, and he gets on his knees before God. All great movements of God start through prayer, by the way. All great movements of God start with prayer. You get outside of the Word and just get into history. All great historical, just the history moments, the Jesus movement. How did it start? Prayer. The mighty moves of God that have happened. Prayer. That's why we start our day here at Trinity on Sunday morning praying over every chair. I tell you it all the time. Every chair. The worship team and and the group of people that pray with me come to this altar every Sunday morning. The first act we do, we pray. Why? Because all great moves of God start with prayer. Elijah knew it. And what did he tell his servant? As his head is between his knees, he says, go and look toward the sea. He told his servant, and he went up and looked, and there's nothing there. You ever really believe God's going to do something and he did nothing? How long have you been praying for something and God's done nothing? He's done nothing. There's nothing there. Wait, it, it, I just went to Mount Carmel. Could you imagine being Elijah? Head between his knees. I just went to Mount, Mount Carmel. I just was on this mountain. And I called fire from heaven in a small paragraph. Like, God, don't you think it's harder to bring fire from heaven than it is to rain? It's been raining since Noah's days. That was the first time it rained. And now we know there's rain. But, God, I I know it's easy to make it rain. Fire from You brought fire from heaven in a paragraph, and now I pray and you did nothing? It's God's timing. God's timing is a little different than our timing, isn't it? Are you faithful When you feel like God's not faithful to you? Are you faithful when you just feel? We can't base our faith on our feelings. Our feelings leave us emotional. Amen? Like some of you have feelings and some of you don't. Like my wife has a lot of feelings. I don't have any. Right? It's just not me. I'm not real good at the whole feel thing. 
I'm just not, if you come crying to me, I'm looking for somebody for you to talk to. It's not because I don't like you and my heart's not with you. It's just I'm uncomfortable. I don't know what to do about it. I, I feel like I should cry, but I'm like, why am I going to cry about that? And I just, I'm not good at that stuff. But my wife, she would sit down at the altar and you could weep all Sunday afternoon together. And we're different in that. That's what makes us a great team. But if we base our faith on our feelings then we're going to miss out on the foundation of who God is. Because it's not based on a feeling. Go, there's nothing. Seven times they go back and forth. By the way, seven is used 700 times in Scripture. It is a number of completion, the number of totality in Hebrew. It means totally done. It's used 700 times in the Bible. I would read them all to you, but you would be bored. Okay, but just trust me or go study it on your own and look it up. But the truth is this, seven times his head's between his knees. Seven times he looks at his servant. Hey, go back. His servant goes back. His servant had to be in in impeccable shape, right? He's running all over Mount Carmel. Run up, runs back. Elijah, there was nothing. Go back. Elijah, there's, there's nothing. Go back. Sorry, Prophet Elijah. Bro, you need to pray a little bit more. Um, Still nothing, man. Like, you just called fire from heaven. Can you not get rain? Come on, man. Go back. Elijah, it's been four times, dude. I'm tired. I need rain because I'm getting thirsty and I need some water. And uh, go back. Hey, Elijah, no rain. When would you quit? When would you give up? Would you, if he said, go back, Elijah, are you kidding me? You want me to go back? Would you give him the teenage answer? Teenage parents, y'all know what I'm talking about. Would you give him the teenage answer? I'm telling you, there's no rain. Go look. I've already looked. Go look again. I don't have to. I've already looked. Go back. I don't want to go back. Y'all know what I'm talking about, the teenage answer? Um, teenagers, amen? No? Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I wonder how many of us give God the teenage answer. Go back. I'm done with this, God. I've been praying for that miracle for a long, long time, and you've done nothing. You have absolutely done. It is faithfulness during the nothing where your faith is seen the strongest. Through the drought requires faithfulness during the nothing. Go back. Elijah, it's been six times, dude. I'm just telling you, the Lord's put you back in quarantine. You're back. You're back. You just need to go take another three years and come back. Because when you took three years, man, you spent time with the Lord, fire fell from heaven. You used all you you got. You need to go back and uh, go back. The seventh time he goes back, and what happens? God provides. I wonder how many of us give up because we don't feel God. Our, Our feelings off, and we're treating God like a teenager. God's not answered my prayer God's not provided for me. God's not taking care of my marriage. He hadn't healed it. God hadn't provided me a spouse. I've been praying for that man or that woman for a long time. There's single people out there. They've been praying for that spouse. Why why won't God provide that spouse? I'm empty. I'm hurting. My bank account's not what I dreamed it to be. 2020 hurt me, destroyed me. Man, I've been praying, but I've got nothing. I even went to Trinity Baptist Church. I even went to the growth track at Trinity Baptist Church. I know that's where you go to get plugged in, and you go to find a small group, and you go to find a place of service, and you go like, that's a spot. 
lot at Trinity. Like, if you go to growth track, like, you're getting plugged in, and the Lord's going to bless you. Amen? And, and, and I did that, and then I came out of growth track, and, and I went to a small group that night. I, I went to some random person's home, and, but they had great food, so I'm going back next week. But that day, I went to that home, and, and they opened the Bible, and we read the Bible like we went through verse by verse in the Bible that the pastor talked about. And then we prayed, and I asked them to pray for me. And it all, and then I got plugged in to serve. I started serving in the student ministry under Pastor Barron. And man, it started getting exciting. Or, or then I left him and went to the preschool ministry. Wherever you decide, to, I started serving. Like I got plugged in, and, and God, why have you not done something for me? Has anybody been there? And it's staying faithful through the nothing. You got to stay faithful. Through the nothing. That's really where faith is seen. Faith is not seen on the mountaintops. It's seen in the nothing. It's easy to have faith when it's raining. It's hard to have faith when it's not. It's hard to have faith to send your servant back when there's been no results. Stay faithful through the nothing. Let's keep going on. Or I'm going to preach one point. And we'll have to do this whole chapter again next week. The seventh time the servant reported. A cloud, this is good. Anybody ever feel insignificant? Anybody ever feel like they've got too little? You know, one thing I've said in the Together We journey, it doesn't matter if you give $5 or $5 million. And I'm sure we're going to get both in the midst of this journey. I believe it. And, and, but it, when we get both, the 5 or the $5 million, is one more significant than the other? No. It's just obedience, doing what God called you to do. Whatever stretches you, whatever pushes you, whatever challenges your, your family, that's how the Scripture tells us to give. And you know what I believe? That God can take your little, and he can do a lot with it. A cloud as small as a man's hand. I, I just, this is, y'all know I love the visual image, right? Because that's just me. I, I live an Instagram life. Amen? And I, I can just imagine, like Twitter, I get bored on because you got to read that whole thing. And, uh, but I can just look at the pictures. And I, I can just imagine him running and the servant going, wait, is, I, 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 Elijah, Elijah, it's a cloud. I can only imagine. Wouldn't you be fired up? You've been up there seven times. There's a cloud. How big's the cloud? Oh, this little video thing. Man, that thing's the size of your hand, Elijah. Well, you better go tell Ahab. Go tell him what? What do you want me to tell him? To hitch up his chariot and go down before the rain stops him because a flood's coming. God can use that which is small to do extraordinary things. God can use you to do extraordinary things. God can use what you give and double it every time. God can use you at work. You say, man, I've got a back closet job. Like nobody sees me. I am, I'm, I'm not of any importance at my work. That's where God puts you, which means that's where God's going to use you. Don't underestimate where you've been placed. Don't underestimate where you are today. Don't underestimate... Man, Pastor, you don't know how much sin I have in my life. Somebody just tuned in online and you're thinking, you don't get it. I got too much junk in my life. I've messed up too much. I've got too much failure. You're never too far from God, number one. When God redeems you, he's going to use you. And you say, well, I don't have much. I don't have, I don't have hardly anything. God only needed five loaves of bread to feed 5,000 people. Come on, somebody. God just needed some jars that somebody put some water in so he could turn the water into wine. You want me to keep going? God can use you in ways that you never thought you would be used if you're just willing to be faithful through the nothing, faithful through the journey, faithful to what God has. That's what I believe for the, for the Together We journey. I think God's going to take this little. You know how many people have come up to me and said, you cannot build a building and redo your worship center for a million bucks. You can't do it. All right, my God can. You watch it happen. Give your money and watch it happen. I promise you. Because God's bigger than all that. He's bigger than 
than all of that. But man, we claim to be so, so small. Go, hitch up. Tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot. Go down before the rain stops. Sometimes we give up too quick, don't we? Sometimes we give up on the journey. Sometimes we're late to the party on the journey because we never thought we should say yes to what the Lord has for us. I want you to hear a story today of a, uh, of a man who recently, we just recently baptized him in the baptistry back during quarantine. Mr. Mike sitting right down here with us today. Mr. Mike gave his life to Christ uh, through, through the quarantine journey of life. Amen. 2020, you found Jesus. What a better year. Come on, somebody. Tell me 2020 got problems. I say it's got victories through Jesus. Amen. Come on down. That'll preach. I might, y'all stay later. I'll preach that one next. Gave his life to Christ, was baptized. His son had been praying for him year after year after year. Last year, his son, when I challenged everybody, who is your one? Who's one person that you need to see come to know Christ? His son started praying for you. And that one day you'd come to know Christ. Who knew it would be then? Check this story out, and then I'll finish today. Uh, my name is Mike McIntyre. This is my son, Glenn McIntyre. Um, we uh, have a story to tell. Uh, I just was, I just been saved um, Easter, this Easter Sunday. Um, I, I am 60 years old on October 15th of this year. It's been a, it's been a long time coming. Um, I'm not proud of that, but uh, uh, Glenn never gave up on me. He, uh, my son, uh, would take me, you know, to uh, Easter Sunday or or uh, uh, Christmas, you know, uh, services every every year, um, and that's that's kind of how I was living my life um, up until this year. Um, something really, really amazing happened. I, I watched uh, uh, Trinity, uh, Pastor Brian's uh, uh, Easter uh, presentation, and uh, I, <clears throat> I didn't have any idea uh, of the process of, you know, giving my life to Christ, and I, I thought it was a more uh, complex um, process but it's it's really just surrendering surrendering your your life to Jesus and uh, he he just put it that simply and I, I started really you know thinking about it and uh, the next day was Easter Sunday and uh, pastor Craig or yeah Craig Rochelle um, was I was listening to the sermon and he he uh, he said you know if you want to give your life to Christ you know Let's do it, and uh, I just uh, gave my life to Christ that day, and it was it was so I, it it was just a an experience that it took me, you know, 59 years to to come come to Christ. But my my son didn't give up on me, uh, so I'm gonna let Mickey say some things. Um, okay, so I, my name is Glenn, but I go by Mickey and the family. It was kind of oh, yeah. awkward hearing him call me Glenn, honest, honestly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I've been a Christian for over 20 years now. Started at Trinity. Um, been to a few different churches and come home to Trinity. And uh, Brian had talked about your one, and I made my one my father. And I really just feverishly prayed that God would soften his heart. Um, and right around March... Uh, you kind of got a feeling that things were changing. Um, so he was watching a lot online, and my my son Vaughn and my wife Lonnie and I were on the phone with him one night, and Vaughn was just telling him some things to read in the Bible, and um, it just, he he was doing the, the legwork before it happened, and then he, I think he just started to realize it's not so much doing your due diligence to become a Christian and a follower of Christ, it's more just giving your life to Christ and surrendering um, your life to Him and living for Him. So, um, yeah, since that day, I mean, it's just been an incredible journey for us. Um, you know, it's something we have in common now, so um, much happier, 
a lot of weight's been lifted off my chest. And it just goes to show um, feverishly praying over something and, and really asking God to move in a big, big way. Um, it, miracles happen and uh, I'm, my, my father is a testament to that. So um, just been a wonderful journey and looking forward to the next 20 years. Me too, me too. Yeah, and I would like to say something about Vaughn, my grandson. He is an incredible man. Uh, you know, just for an example, like on the cruise, he he uh, told me the story of, of King uh, Joseph or King David. I can't remember. And, I mean, you know, he's, he's just an incredible uh, young man. And, and he was the one that told me, look, uh, read uh, John first, start with John, and then go Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and, and can, you know, on and on. And that's, that's what I did. I read the whole New Testament, and now I'm in the process of reading the Old Testament. And uh, I'm just uh, excited uh, for, my, for my family. It's, it's, it's my family, and, and uh, I, uh, I'm really excited to be a Christian, to be a child of God. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Long time praying. Aren't you glad, Glenn, Mick, is that what y'all call him? I call him Glenn. Um, aren't you glad they didn't give up? Aren't you glad? Sometimes we give up. Sometimes we give up on the journey. But there's somebody out there needing to meet Jesus. That's why we can't give up. And I bet today some of you are where Mike was. And you, you've been distant from God. You never surrendered your life over to Almighty God. You never just paused in your life and said, you know what? It's time for me to surrender my life over to Jesus. Somebody's watching online or somebody's in this room and said, it's the greatest decision you're ever going to make in your life. If I could plead with you to surrender your life to Jesus, I would. Just like the Apostle Paul did. I would plead. That's how big of a deal it is that you pause in your life and you say, I'm going to give Almighty God my life. You do it through recognizing you're a sinner, which we've all agreed to through this sermon, that that's pretty easy for us all. In need of a Savior and you ask Jesus to step out of heaven and step into your life, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, he does so. But it's your choice. It's your choice, 100% your choice, if you're going to surrender your life over to Jesus. And here's what I would say. I would ask you today, would you let today be the day that you say yes to Jesus? Let it be today. You say, Pastor, how do I do it? Just tell him, God, I give you my life. I'll lead you in a prayer. It can be that simple. Mike, like you said, it's not complex. God, I give you my life. That's a starting point. We have a class to help you with the journey. You say, well, I don't know if I'm ready. I, I don't know what all that means. We have a class to help you with that. We'll connect you with the class. going to help you grow in your faith. It's important that you first say yes to Jesus. And if you've never done that, I just want to pause right now. I want to lead you in an opportunity to give your life to Christ. I just want to invite everybody to pray with me. And if you're out there and you're watching online or you're in the room and you say, Pastor, I'm ready, would you say this? Would you just say, Dear Heavenly Father, in the best way I know how, I turn my back on my sin and I give my life to you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. I promise to never the same again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. If you just prayed that prayer and you meant it with all your heart, I want you to text the number on the screen. Let's go ahead and type a text. If you're in the room, you can also fill out a card in the seat back in front of you. I challenge you, don't leave. Don't turn it off. Don't leave without texting or without filling out a card and letting us help you in the journey. 
help putting us in, in contact with people. I can help you grow in your faith, helping you take that next step of baptism. I'm telling you, it is the biggest deal in your life that you can do. Don't miss out on that moment. Text in right now. Fill out the card right now and let us know. Let us help you in that journey. But can I say something to all the believers? If you know you got a relationship with Jesus, maybe you've been in the middle of the nothing and you've really started debating, God, are, are you going to come through? Or maybe you've seen God come through. You, you know, as Christians, sometimes we quickly forget the provision of God, do we not? Like, uh, think about Elijah. Just think about this in Elijah's life. Elijah called for no rain. God provided a brook. Then God provided a widow. Then he healed the widow's child who passed away. He brought the widow's child back to life. He brought fire from heaven. He prayed seven times, and God sent rain. And then as he gets back with Jezebel, Jezebel looks at him, the queen, and she says to him, she sent a messenger to Elijah, it says in 19 verse 2, to say, may the God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like the one of them, that I don't have you killed. And Elijah was afraid. I wonder if some of you are afraid right now because of the drought. I wonder if you're living in fear as a believer. You've seen God come through. He's done it before. Yeah, but this time, this time, Elijah, it's fascinating. Go read 1 Kings 19. I'm not going to preach it next week, all right? Go read it because what happens is Elijah gets in a, in a discussion with Almighty God, and he's like, God, what are you doing? I, I thought, man, what, what's taking place? I'm all alone here. And God's like, what are you talking about? I've already provided for you, man. If you don't pay attention, I wonder who just needs a moment with the Lord for the Lord to speak into your life and say, are you not paying attention? I've got you. I'm going to provide for you. Uh, Elijah says, I'm the only prophet left. And then what's God say back to him in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18? God says, yet I reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal. There's 7,000 people that are ready to follow. There's 7,000 people that I've kept and I've protected. There's 7,000 people. Don't you go whining on me. Don't you go giving up on me. Don't you go quitting on me because I got a plan for you and I've got something special for you. Don't you miss it. Can I give that word to you as believers today? Don't miss what God has for you. Don't live defeated. Here's what I love about that. Watch this. I'll be done in a moment. I know I'm going round two sermon. So Jezebel sent a messenger. Why didn't she send the whole army? Did you ever think about that? Why didn't she send somebody to arrest him? She didn't want to arrest him. She wanted to contain him. She wanted to stop him. She wanted to bully him. She wanted to make him quit. Can I tell you, that's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy's like a roaring lion seeking someone to de, seeking someone to, to destroy, and he wants to prowl upon you. And you know what the enemy wants to do in your life? Is to contain you. The enemy wants to say to the mics of the world, don't get saved. I'm going to hold you back. I'm going to contain you. The enemy's saying to some of you, don't be baptized. Yeah, I know everywhere in Scripture it says that baptism follows salvation. Don't get baptized. What will people think of you? They, they've already said that. What if somebody thinks of Don't be baptized. The enemy wants to contain you from living in obedience. That's why people aren't faithful in their tithes sometimes. Why? The enemy's convinced them not to do it. It's containing them. That's why we live in depression. That's why we get defeated. That's why we let the enemy of defeat speak into us and the enemy of depression speak into us. That's why we stop praying. That's why we stop living. That's why we stop going to church. I'm telling you, we need to let the enemy stop containing us and we need to go live out our faithfulness and see the gospel go. We need gospel believers. We gotta go live for him. We can't live contained. Jezebel wanted to contain. 
Elijah and God said, what are you doing? What are you doing? Who needs to be released today? Who's let the drought contain them? As a follower of Jesus, who's let the drought hold them back? Maybe you need to come to this altar today. There might be some other things. Maybe you need to thank God for your little and say, God, take my little and multiply it. Maybe you're facing defeat today and you need to get on your knees and say, God, I'm giving you my defeat. I know you'll come through. My God will. Claim the victory. We said in defeat so much, but God says claim the victory. My God will. Maybe you need to have a moment. Maybe you need a pastor to pray over you. We'll put that number back on the screen, and maybe you need to text in. Maybe you need to text in that you need to be baptized. You can fill out a card, or if you're online, you can text in. In the room, you can fill out a card or text in. We'll throw that number back up on the screen for you so that you can do that. Can we do that? There it is, right there. You text in, I need to be baptized. I know it. I've been living contained. I need to be freed up. It's time I move forward. Maybe you got a prayer request. You need to text us, or you need to I don't know what it is. But it's time we let the Holy Spirit come alive in us. Amen? So, God, we give you this moment. God, stir the hearts of believers. Give us us the fire that you gave Elijah to stand. But, Lord, let us resist the enemy that's going to try to contain us. Even Elijah got afraid. There's people living in fear. Lord, would you fill them full of your spirit today, whether online or in the room. Fill them full of you. Meet people in their cars, in their homes, in this room. God, let us get on our knees before you. God, begin to work on us in a mighty way. Heal hearts today. Heal marriages today. Heal lives today. Inspire people today. Let us be called to repentance today. God, have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.